Welcome back. New year, new opportunities to invest. The uh, stock market rally has rolled on into 18 with the Dow, the S&P 500, and the Nasdaq all hitting all-time highs throughout the week. Joining us right now to talk more about that, Tiger 21 Chairman Michael Sonnenfeld. Michael, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So it's been, I don't know, if you put money in ETFs, passive investing, it, you, you made some money. But you say 18 is going to be more selective in terms of a stock picker's market. For sure. You know, 2017, it was a beta huggers market if you had any broad exposure. 2018, people are, opti are optimistic but cautious. Will this rally be choked off by rising rates? Uh, will the f Fed thread the needle? Our members meet in these meetings and they talk about these concerns. Yesterday in a meeting, I was eight hours. Business owners really excited. Investors saying, how's the balance going to work out? Mm -hmm. You do it under a new Fed chief as well, which I guess is obviously a challenge in that you don't know as much about uh, Powell as maybe you would uh, the outgoing Fed uh, chair. Or maybe you do. What do you expect? Same old? Or? Well, the biggest conundrum right now is our members are all looking at wages wages are not rising the way right. they typically would be at this point in the cycle so they're trying to tie that to their investment thesis is it going to you know Warren Buffett yesterday came out and said the market hasn't even fully priced in the benefits of the uh, tax reform right. very positive Phil Gross says the market has run its course he's short for the first time so they're looking at these balances and when you get a lot of entrepreneurs not economists people who are running businesses our members are saying so which way do we go it's a bit of cautious optimism but the markets seem to be more vulnerable, particularly the bond market, to headline risk. This is a story that Maria saw first thing yesterday morning, that it was, it was by um, one of the wire services that Chinese officials were looking at uh, slowing or halting purchases of U.S. Treasuries. And actually, later on, the uh, State Administration of Foreign Exchange came out and said the news, uh, the news could quote the wrong source of information or maybe fake news. From that you China. have China referring to this report as fake news. So it's diversifying its foreign exchange reserves, yeah. but not really pulling back so much on um, dramatically on Treasury uh, sure. purchases. So I, I think what you're talking about is our members are trying to say, how do you look at the deficit? Some people say the tax reform will increase the deficit. That's been the consensus. But will that choke off investment? Will it drive interest rates higher? And I think it's that balance. So the the bond market is much more jittery about the notion of coming inflation and rising uh, deficits. And our members are thinking, so what are the businesses that will benefit from rising interest rates and what will be choked off by rising interest yeah, I rates? I mean, whatever it is, whether it's China, whether it's Canada, uh, you're talking about rise, rising interest rates at some point. Yeah. You know, one thing that Jamie Dimon said earlier in the week is that rates stayed lower for longer than anybody expected. They're going to stay up for longer, sure. uh, longer than people expected as well. So that's something we're going to be dealing with. Yeah. yeah, going back to the wages, it, it seems to me if if these unemployment rates continue to drop and we come towards, you know, generally speaking, full employment, doesn't that doesn't that raise wages as a result of that competition? For sure. So and, it's and a good reason. Yeah, that's the conundrum. We're already at four and a half percent, and typically wages should be rising. It should have already point. happened. And yeah. the question is, is the four and a half percent different today because of the way the statistics are made? And if you're a business owner like most of our members all across North America saying, how is this impacting on my business? You know, we don't want to forget the, new, the United States has such competitive advantage, best energy complex, best rule of law, best transportation, that we have a real tailwind. We don't want to choke it off. But if you have rates going high too quickly, then you're going to see some real choke off. Didn't always have a great tax system, especially for businesses, in terms of competitiveness, Correct. to your point. But now, maybe we do, and once that kicks in, you see the wages go up? Uh, again, uh, historically, wages should have already been going up Even now. without the tax. Even uh, without the yeah. tax. Mm -hmm. so, so will this even push it faster? That's the question all of our members are doing. And if you're an entrepreneur thinking about, what's my next business move? Right. This is question number one. Yeah, it's really interesting that, that Buffett, and you quoted him earlier, would say that this is not priced into the market yet, yeah. given the $7 trillion in market value that has been gained since the election. But... We don't know, really, the context of it. We are going to know in the next couple of weeks, by the way. Fourth quarter earnings begin tomorrow, and we're going to get guidance from CEOs who are yep. going to say, this is what we're expecting, partly because of the tax plan. And the estimates call for 13% in terms of earnings growth for the S&P 500. Yep. So you're saying your members don't think that's priced in yet. 
Uh, some of them don't. You know, we're, we're, we're 600 people of diverse backgrounds, diverse businesses. So the ones who are sensitive, you know, you look at Disney as an example. That's a high taxpayer. This tax reform is going to be hugely beneficial for cash flow on 40 Disney. 40 percent to 21 percent? That's yeah. a big deal. I think it's low 30s, but, but on Apple, uh, Apple was a low taxpayer, so this tax reform is going to bring money back from the overseas. That's the impact big, on the Apples. Real quick, big benefit to banks and telecom companies because they have largely domestic operations, and they right. didn't get the benefit from kind of the favorable tax treatment of intellectual property being housed overseas, which Apple did, but say the, the banking sector did not. So that, yeah. those are two sectors to yeah, watch and we didn't out even for. talk about the benefit if you own a business under the tax law you'll have a better chance getting it to your kids and keeping it intact. And that allows you to look for a longer time horizon. So there are clearly some benefits from the new tax law. But if it raises the deficit too much and chokes it off and interest rates don't rise nicely, but they spike up high, that could create some dislocation. Do you think companies are going to be more poised to buy back stock, pay dividends or invest in their business? You know, Companies were flush with cash before this. That's one of the things. It, companies have had a lot, of, and they haven't been investing as much. And they pay dividends. And they pay dividends. Historically, this kind of money would go to stock buybacks. People are hoping that it'll uh, take more investment. Our but climate is fabulous for investment. Did in that way. anybody think that you would have more than 130 big name major companies stepping up and okay. saying, "Hey, we're taking some of this tax reform and we're giving it back to our employers, toot sweet, right away." I know that was incredible. It's incredible, but it's, it's at the margin. Let's, let's not get too excited about it. Some of it's windows. We're dressing. excited. We're excited. Yeah. We're, we're ripped up today, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. Good to see you, sir. Michael Sonnenfeld there.